Today we're going to subtract fractions, but we're going to subtract them by using another method by borrowing. Okay, um, and the first parts one, two, and three. Um, I tried to stick with the same um, steps that you knew from the previous videos on fractions because I just feel that it's best for you to keep going with the same thing that you know how to do. Um, so this is just a little bit different, um, but I was thinking that a lot of your teachers may want you to do this, so I decided to, decided to show you how to, you know, how to do it. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so let's say I had um, three and two eighths minus one and three-fourths. Okay? Okay. Right now I can subtract three, two minus three. So you have you need to since you have a whole number right here you want to go over here and borrow one so you want to put a put a strike through the three and the three will become a two well you have this one hanging out here you got a one well what am I going to do with this one that I have hanging out here I have the I have the three the three reduces down to two and that leaves me with one so this one and I can't put it down here I need to leave the one in the top okay so I'm going to pick a one to add to this fraction and the one that I'm going to choose is is going to be the one that has an eight in it eight over eight now the reason why I chose eight over eight is because I can just add these two fractions straight across okay that's the reason uh, if I were to choose another number that other than 8 over 8, then I'll have to get a common denominator for this fraction, and I don't want to do that. I want to make it as simple as possible, okay? So, um, I can't subtract 2 minus 3, so I have to go over here and borrow 1 from the 3. That leaves me with 2. 2 and 1 will still, I still have 3 here, it just looks different. I have a th 2 and a 1, that's still 3, okay? So now that I have the same denominator, I can just add across. 2 plus 8 is 10. Keep my same denominator. Okay? Now I want to bring this over. The 3 fourths over. Now I'm going to see if I can add my fractions now. Well, I have a denominator of 8 and I have a denominator of 4. I can't add these two fractions because I need to get a common denominator. So now I'm going to get a common denominator. And I tell you how to get a common denominator in the previous videos. Let's list our multiples. We're going to list our multiples of 8, which is 8. 16, 24, and so on. And we're going to list our multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, and so forth. Okay? Well, what multiple do they have in common? They have the number 8 in common. So 8 is going to be my new denominator. Now I need to get my new numerator. I know that 8 times 1 is 8, so 10 times 1 is 10. I know that 4 times 2 is 8, and 3 times 2 is 6. Now that I have my same denominators, I have an 8 in this denominator, 8 in this denominator. Now I can subtract. 
10 minus 6 is 4 eighths. However, you don't want to forget about your whole numbers over here. You have a 2 minus 1. Remember, it's 2 now because you borrowed 1 from the 3. Okay? To put here. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Since these two fractions are even numbers, I know that I can reduce this fraction. So I'm going to list my factors for 8 and for 4. 1 times 4, 2 times 2, 1 times 8, 2 times 4. Well, what factors do they have in common? They have a, two, a 1 in common, they have a 2 in common, and they have a 4 in common. So, but what is, I know that they have a 1, 2, and 4 in common, but what is the largest number that they have in common? I can also ask you, what is the greatest common factor? Okay? The greatest, the GCF, is going to be 4. So since my GCF is 4, I'm going to First of all, I'm going to write my equal sign. I'm going to bring my 1 over. I'm going to divide 4, divided by 4, and 8, divided by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So this is my answer right here. All right. Let's work another one. Four and two fifths minus two and four fifths. All right. This time I have when I subtract. I can't subtract 2 minus 4. So I need to, that tells me that I need to go over here and borrow 1 from the 4. So the 4 become a 3. So I have this 1 out there. I'm going to add a 1 to this 2 fifths. Which 1 do you think I'm going to add? I'm going to add 5 over 5. Why did I pick 5 over 5? Because the denominator is 5 here. Okay. Now I'm going, I'm going to add across. 2 plus 5 is 7. And I'll bring my denominator 5 over. I'm going to bring my 4 fifths, so 4 fifths over. Now I'm going to check to see if I have the same denominator. Since my denominator is 5, both denominators are 5, I can subtract now. 7 minus 4 is 3 fifths. However, don't forget about your whole number over here. A lot of people forget about their whole numbers over here. 3 minus 2 is 1. And this is your final answer. And remember the reason why I told you that this is, you know this is your final answer? Because I know that 3 and 5, they, they're, the greatest common factor is 1. So 1 times 3, 1 times 5. They only share a 1. So since the greatest common factor is 1, then I know this is in simplest terms. And that's the final answer. Okay. I want you to try one now using this method. All right. Let's see. Let's do eight and one fourths minus five and two thirds. 
okay if you please um, subtract these two two fractions using the um, borrowing method please okay so when I first looked at this problem I noticed that my denominators were not the same so I need to get um, I need to get like um, I need to get a like denominators so my denominator is going to be 12 because this is my um, least common multiple 12 is my least common multiple for 3 and 3 and 4 then I'm going to multiply 4 times 3 to get 12 so 1 times 3 will give me 3 and 3 times 4 will give me 12 and 2 times 4 will give me 8 okay um, so now I'm to the point where I have the same denominator so I can subtract well in this problem I can't subtract 3 minus 8 so since I can't subtract 3 minus 8 I need to go over here to the side with this 8 and I need to borrow 1 from the 8 so this 8 will now become a 7 and I have this 1 right here well I need to add this 1 to this top fraction here but what which one am I going to add I'm gonna add 12 over 12 why did I choose 12 over 12 because I would immediately have the same denominator okay so I'm gonna add these two fractions 3 plus 12 is 15 bring my 12 over and now I'm gonna bring over my 8 twelfths now that I have the same denominator and I can subtract 15 minus 8 15 minus 8 is 7 over 12 but this is not your final answer don't forget about your whole numbers over here it's no longer 8 minus 5 it's 7 minus 5 because we had to borrow one here so 7 minus 5 is 2 and this is your final answer right here all right okay um, please visit uh, mathwithmoon.org for any future videos that you may need um, I hope this video helped you and I will see you next time bye